Hi, I'm Tim Green and today I'm going to bring you the second instalment of my journey through the world of repairable atomizers. Today I'm going to bring you um, the atomizer, that's atto-miser, by Enhaler. It's a repairable dripping atomizer. Uh, I believe it was the first commercially available um, repairable dripping atomizer. Um, so let's take a look at what you get in the kit and um, put it to the test. Right, well, as you see, there's quite a few things that come with the atomizer. Um, of all of the repairable atomizers that uh, I've actually uh, looked at, this one's got quite the most comprehensive kit. Now, first of all, um, there's a, a special deal that you can get where you get uh, two atomizers um, and they give you a deal with extra wick and extra wire, uh, more than buying two separately. Um, so, plenty of stuff to, to be getting on with. Let's look at each bit individually. First of all, it all comes in a inhaler.com branded baggie, which I find very useful. It's a bit grubby now because I, I basically keep uh, a good supply of wick and wire for my repairable atomizers in there, uh, along with the tools and everything else I need, and that I take with me everywhere I go. Uh, inside that baggie you get uh, a screwdriver, so a Phillips screwdriver, uh, a safety pin, which you use for, for winding your coil, uh, a pair of foldable scissors, which is a fantastic little touch, um, a stack of wick that's all pre-cut to length, um, and, and basically when you're making a, a new atomizer element you just pull a piece out and you use all of that. <laughs> Can't get easier, it's, it's, it's pre-cut so there's, there, there's no thinking about it. Um, you also get a stack of different uh, resistance wires. We've got um, 2 ohms, 3 ohms and 4 ohms. I'll come back to the wire in a minute. Um, we get uh, this little piece of metal here which is actually uh, a spanner or a wrench which um, on the bottom of the atomizer it actually clicks in and that's for tightening it up nice and tight or untightening it from the mouthpiece here. Um, last but not least you get obviously the atomizer base and the mouthpiece. Now the uh, the atomizer works in exactly the same way as all of the repairable atomizers on the market. Um, if you look at the bottom here, you've got positive and negative terminals. Um, you have a wick arrangement here with your resistance wire wrapped around the wick and attached to the positive and negative terminals. The wire itself, um, now the wire that comes with it, I'll use a larger piece because it's perhaps a little easier to illustrate. If you look at the wire, um, I'll take a piece out, I'm not sure if you'll be able to tell so well, but we'll, we'll have a look, that piece is broken, so that's a poor example. Um, here we go. Now I don't know if you can see, you have here a thicker piece of wire, and then a join, and then a thinner piece, and then another join, and then a thicker piece. Now this is actually a prefabricated um, hybrid wire. The thicker parts of the wire are actually no resistance wire, and those act as the tails that wrap around your positive and negative terminals. Now that's important because if you look at the base of the atomizer, the terminals are actually right on the base. There's no posts, they don't stand proud, and for that reason it can be a little fiddly um, actually tying the, uh, the, 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 the wire onto it. Um, and I generally need to use a pair of tweezers to make sure that I've got it wrapped around there properly. 
Now, if this combination of no resistance and resistance wire sounds familiar, it's how the IATI works. Um, you could probably use a piece of this wire in the IATI and it would probably work okay if it was long enough. I'm not sure that it is. It means that if um, you don't want to go back to inhaler to buy supplies, um, that you can basically use the IRT method for creating um, your, your wire, which is basically to take a piece of no resistance wire and a piece of resistance wire, twist them together, double it over, twist that double over join, um, and, and that gives you your, your, your initial join of re no resistance to resistance, and then you do it again with another piece of no resistance wire. Now, as it stands, the very first versions of the of the atomizer by inhaler, that's exactly what you had to do. Uh, I'm aware they went to a great deal of time, energy and resource um, actually sourcing um, somewhere that could fabricate this wire already made. There's you know there's a there's a trade off there though. It's prefabricated. It's ready to use, it's cut to length, it's pre-measured, so there's going to be a premium attached to that. I, I've not actually looked at the cost of additional supplies. I've got enough wick uh, resistance wire and no resistance wire of my own to never have to worry about that. But it does become a practical issue for other people. Um, and it's something that you will want to consider. Now, how does it work? Well... First of all, got the, uh, this is a fresh, clean, uh, unprimed wick. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to prime the wick, assemble the mouthpiece onto it, um, and then we'll, we'll see what it's like actually in action. Um, so I'll take my juice. Now when I actually purchased this, I did get the double pack. Um, I've only now got one of these uh, atomizers. The other is with um, Griswold. I, uh, I lent him the other one to try out because he, he, at the time, he'd never tried a repairable atomizer of any type before. Um, and hey, he makes good juice. So, just priming this wick well. Now you see that's quite translucent. Now, take the mouthpiece and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the larger ends of the wick straight inside the mouthpiece like that and screw it down. Now if you can hold it fairly tightly you should be able to get it most of the way down. There are little bits of juice on the edges there, so I'll just clean that off. And before I go anywhere near the uh, the mod with this, I'll just use the the spanner or wrench uh, just to tighten this all the way up. And there we go. Now I've pre-tested that uh, coil. I used a piece of the two ohm wire. And when I'd finished wrapping it and tested it, it's actually measured out at 1.9 ohms, which is absolutely fine for me. Um, on the Provari, I'll just uh, check the ohmage once more. Okay, so that's 2.2. Resistance has changed probably with the addition of the juice. But 2.2 ohms again is fine. I'll make sure it's at a suitable voltage. We're at 4.4, that's fine for me as well. Now what I'm going to do is take the Provari off so that you can see it properly. There's a primed wick in there, but I haven't as yet added any juice. Now I'm only going to add uh, a few drops of juice on top of that. Okay, just three drops. Um, give the mouthpiece a little bit of white. Now once you break this in, you can actually um, put quite a few drops in here. 
not as much as the RDA, but all the same. Now you see I've got a little bit of a leakage there in juice, and that's because I've added juice onto a well-primed coil. Is that working? Can you hear that working? Okay. Now, first of all, I have to say I absolutely hate the aesthetics of this atomizer. If you look at it, it's big and it's black. It's wide and it's wide and uh, frankly it looks like either a nipple or a, a baby's dummy. Sadly it feels like a baby's dummy as well when you're using it because of this moulded mouthpiece. For me it would have been far better to get rid of this section completely uh, and have a drip tip friendly um, recess in the top. I can snap my favourite drip tip in and I think that would have helped the aesthetics immensely. Anyway, so this is the, um, the Atomizer by Inhaler. Um, let's see how it vapes. Let's see how she does. Now there's not a phenomenal amount of vapour that comes off there. Now that's partially because um, that's a brand new, uh, well primed atomizer in there. Um, it does get better with use, but not a lot better. I would say see, I've tried a bit more then, and still not masses amount of vapor. However, there is pretty good flavour with this. Um, now my experience has been that atomizers of this general shape and dimension do produce fairly good flavour. Uh, in some cases very very good. There's also the side effect of the nicotine content of the juice seems to have a far greater effect. Now that is applicable with the atomizer the RDA, Clockworks uh, Repairable Dripping Atomizer, uh, and the RTA, which is Clockworks Repairable Tank Atomizer. And they have a similar thing, where there is a phenomenal amount of flavour, or you know, and a phenomenal hit, as far as the nicotine is concerned. Now, with the atomizer, I do get that nicotine hit without a shadow of a doubt. I don't get as much vapour as I would like. Um, and the flavour, the flavour is okay. It's not brilliant, however, it is better than, say, a tank atomizer. So if flavour is what matters for you, I would compare this probably closest to an 801 atomizer or cartomizer. Now, on the side of the atomizer, and you, you're not going to be able to see this very well, you have two air holes. There's one here and one on the opposite side too. Now, two air holes, that to me spells trouble. And on every other atomizer, a repairable atomizer that I've come across, you'll only have one ventilation hole. Now the original ventilation holes that that were on here, there were there are there have always been two, but when it originally came, the drawer was so tight, I couldn't get anything out of it at all. So what I had to do was widen one of the holes, which I did by taking a hot pin and just sliding it in to make it wider. Now that improved the drawer and the flavour, but it didn't improve much else um, and I found actually that 
the best thing to do is to actually take a piece of tape and cover one of the holes. I generally cover the hole that I didn't widen. Um, cover that with tape um, and you get a far better effect. Now, I haven't got any tape with me, so I'm going to just use my finger to cover the hole, cover one of the holes, and we'll see how this vapes now with one of the holes covered. Okay. Flavour increase again. A little bit more vapour that time. Um, still not as much vapour as I would like. But you are getting an increase in flavour again. And that's because there's less air on the drawer. Um, so, uh, if you're an 801 Carto lover. Um, and you're a dripper. Which is a strange combination because you might not be a dripper if you're an 801 Carto lover. But if you like the flavour of an 801 cart you like to drip, then the atomizer by inhaler might be the atomizer for you. Um, in the spirit of all these reviews, I've actually um, graded the atomizer, uh, and I'll grade all the atomizers that I test in the same way, um, basically in five categories. Looks, ease of use, flavour, adaptability, and value for money and an overall score at the end. Now the atomizer from inhaler uh, looks wise look at it. It is butt ugly. It's awful. It's black which is fine I suppose if you've got an all black mod. <sighs> There's nothing nice I can say about the aesthetics of it. Um, as I said if there was no built-in tip there and you could put in your own drip tip fantastic that would be great and that would improve the aesthetics no end at all as it stands aesthetically it's terrible and so I give it a three uh, ease of use well it's very easy to set up it's a little fiddly getting the uh, wire wrapped around the terminals and you also have to remember when you're putting it together, putting the coil onto the terminals, you need to make sure that you push the coil up off the base of the atomizer, otherwise it's going to short. If it touches that metal base, it's going to short and it's not going to work. Um, I think the, the fact that there's a little spanner uh, or wrench, whatever you want to call it, to take the thing apart, it's a nice touch, but it, it's one extra step and it's a little piece of metal um, that if you lose it and the thing's too tight you're down to using pliers and then if you're using pliers you're going to strip threads on the, on the atomizer connection that said uh, as long as you're careful and you don't lose it um, it's not too bad um, there is the issue with the wire if you run out of supplies, you're down to twisting wire and putting it together that way. And for that reason, and for the spanner, etc., I'm going to give the atomizer a average score because I don't think it's too difficult to use, but at the same time, it's not really easy to use. Um, so I'm going to give it a five. Flavor. Now, flavor is definitely better than the tank atomizer. Of uh, that, I can't. I, I, there's just, it's just far better. Um, is it the best flavour I've had from a, a repairable atomizer? No. Um, <sighs> if I look at the flavour element of this, completely unmodified. Um, so I'm not putting tape around the atomizer, I'm using as it is with the tight drawer. Um, I would have to mark it down on the fact that the X2 area, which steals flavour, um, and the tight drawer. So I would give it a, a mark of 6. Adaptability. 
Well, it's a 510 um, threaded repairable atomizer, so it'll work on any 510 mod or any other mod with a 510 to the relevant adapter. That's about it. It's a dripping atomizer. It doesn't do anything else. Um, so I'm gonna give it. A, I'm gonna give it a four. Um, it's not like some um, cartridge atomizers where you can dump the cartridge and you can use a drip tip instead. Um, it's just a dripping atomizer. So I'm gonna give it a four. Uh, Value for money. Well, if you buy the special deal which gives you two atomizers um, and all of this kit, in fact there's actually you get actually more of this because when I gave one of these to Griswold I gave him a stack of resistance wire, I gave him a bundle like this of wick again um, so he wouldn't have to worry too much. So you get a stack of stuff, you get a bag to keep it all in. I have to be honest, it's pretty good value for money. There's plenty of wire to see you through. Um, if you're using a variable voltage mod, it doesn't matter what the resistance wire is. So you start at your favourite resistance, and if you run out of that wire, you can go use all the other resistance wires. You just need to crank up your voltage. Simple as that. Uh, for that reason, um, because you did quite a lot of stuff, I'm going to give uh, value for money for the atomizer a 7. So that gives me 3 for looks, 5 for ease of use, 6 for flavour, 4 for adaptability, and 7 for value for money. That gives me an overall score of 5 out of 10. So, pretty average. Um, but that said, I don't want to, I don't want you thinking that an average score means it's just a, an average run of the mill atomizer. It's still a decent piece of kit, and there is no doubt at all that there are people out there that really like it. If you're a big fan of dripping, if you want a bit of extra flavour than what you're getting from a normal Carto, from a normal Atti, whatever, the atomizer is not a bad place to go. Um, there are better places to go though, and you'll see those better places in future reviews. Um, now the next review I'm going to do is for the Bully A1 repairable atomizer. Yes, that's the A1. You don't see that one about so much. Um, so that'll be the next one that I do. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching and that this has been useful. And I'll speak to you again soon. Keep on vaping.